Hello and welcome to this episode of Question Hour from inside the Parliament House complex. I am Vishal Dahiya and with me is my colleague Kriti Mishra. And in the next half an hour, both of us will take you through some important questions asked by the members of Parliament and answered by the government in the previous session of Parliament. So Kriti, let's begin. And the first one is from Amar Shankar Sable who goes on to ask the government whether any survey has been conducted recently to find out the number of urban poor and whether government has any proposal to implement fresh schemes for urban poverty alleviation. Well, Vishal, the government has given a very crisp answer and the government goes on to say that as per poverty estimates for 2011-12 released by erstwhile planning commission, the percentage of persons below poverty line in 2011-12 has been estimated as 13.7% in urban areas. To reduce poverty and vulnerability of urban poor, the Deen Dayal Antyodaya Yojana, National Urban Livelihoods Mission is being administered by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in all statutory towns till 2022. Moving on to one of the start questions, Vishal, and in one of these questions, AAP MP Sanjay Singh questioned the Urban Development Ministry about Atlan Mission Scheme launched in 2015. He claimed that the centre has only released 19% of the total funds allocated. लेसन इट उस 77000 करोड़ रुपए में आधा पैसा राज्यों को देना था आधा पैसा केंद्र सरकार को देना था लेकिन 3.5 साल बीत जाने के बाद इस योजना में मात्र 19% मात्र 19% पैसा खर्चा हुआ है मान्यवर तो मैं यह मंत्री महोदय से जानना चाहता हूं आपके माध्यम से कि 5 वर्ष की योजना में अगर आपने 19 प्रतिशत मात्र पैसा खर्च किया है, तो इस योजना को डेढ़ वर्षों में आप कैसे पूरा करेंगे? Well, replying to this question in the Parliament, the Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, who holds urban affairs portfolio, said that the government has released 90 percent and not 19 percent of the allocated funds. Let's take a look at his detailed answer. Now. Sir, the percentage of money released is 90 percent, not 19 percent. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. Sir, this scheme, this scheme involves a central outlay of 50,000 crores for five years. And under this, a total, as the Honorable Member says, of something like 77,640 crores is what has been approved as part of SAAPs. These are state annual action plans. The release of money is in three installments in the segments of 20%, 40%, and 40%. The first 20% is released on the receipt of the SAAP. The next installment is released after the state has certified that it has utilized 75% of the amount due uh, to be expended and the state's share. So what we have done is to have released money to all the states under the first SAAP except three states because they could not meet their milestone. SP member Ram Gopal Yadav asked whether IRMA or Institute of Rural Management Anand has submitted any reports of findings on various issues relating to Atal Mission. Review or monitoring agency है इसने कोई review किया है कोई report आपको दी है कि पैसा कितना कहां कहां खर्च हुआ है या मौके पे ये कभी गई कहीं well, this one is also answered uh, by uh, the Union Minister, Hadi Puri, who said that while IRMA presents its reports from time to time, an APEX committee headed by Union Ministry Secretary who reviews progress of the scheme every three months. Sir, the answer to that question is a categorical yes. But in addition to that, we also have an APEX committee headed by the Secretary in the uh, Housing and Urban Affairs Ministry, which meets regularly once in three months and reviews all the progress on this. Let's now move on to the Ministry of External Affairs. And uh, this time around, uh, Ambika Soni asked the government whether there's been any progress uh, made in getting India's membership in Nuclear Suppliers Group, that is NSG, especially in the plenary meeting held recently at Latvia. MOS External Affairs VK Singh has given this very important answer and he says that India's application for membership of the Nuclear Suppliers Group remains under consideration of the group. USA and France continue to strongly support India's membership. The government is engaged with all NSG members, including China, at the appropriate levels for a decision on India's application for membership of the group. In this regard, the most recent talks were held in Beijing on April 10, 2018. 
Moving on to the next question, and D. Kupendra Reddy has asked whether it is a fact that thousands of persons of Indian origin and NRIs in foreign countries are waiting a long period to obtain their citizenship in those countries, especially in the USA. This grant of citizenship to foreign nationals is a sovereign function of the host country and owing to strict privacy laws in most of the countries, the number of such pending requests cannot be ascertained given the fact that grant of citizenship to foreign nationals is a prerogative of the host government. There is a limited scope to extend support to the PIOs and NRIs in this regard. However, Indian missions and posts abroad extend all necessary consular services and support to the PIOs and NRIs when approached with proper documentation. These services include, among others, cancellation of Indian passport, issuance of surrender certificate and necessary attestation of documents that originated in India. One of the members, Vijila Satyanath, asked about the security measures taken by the government regarding passport application through mobile phone app. She also raised the question of severe shortage of passport employees in the passport office. What are the security measures being taken by the government while engaging passport applications through mobile app? While well, answering this question on the floor of the House, External Affairs Minister Sushma Suraj confirmed that there has been no compromise on security aspects with passport applications through the new mobile app and any attempt to get fake passports will be rejected. Suraj said that passport services have improved regardless of shortage of staff. Take a listen. The first security measure we have taken is that when we do the mobile app, we have the passport, our data and receiving center is DRC. उसमें वो आ जाएगा लेकिन मोबाइल से डिलीट हो जाएगा तो आपके मोबाइल में वो रहेगा नहीं सबसे बड़ा हमारा फीचर है दूसरा अगर कोई फेक पासपोर्ट बनाता है जो कि लोग साइबर कैफे में यूजर फ्रेंडली होने के कारण से बना लेते थे वो हमारे डीआरसी में आएगा ही नहीं तो जो बात आपने कही है कि बड़े बड़े देश करते हैं कंसर्न हम वो कोई छोटा देश नहीं है और हमने भी सबसे पहले जिस ऐप को जब लागू किया तो ये दो बड़े सिक्योरिटी मेजर्स हमने रखे कि मोबाइल ऐप डीआरसी से मिलते ही मोबाइल से वो डिलीट हो जाएगा और अगर कोई फेक बनाता है तो डीआरसी में आएगा ही नहीं उससे जुड़ेगा ही नहीं आस्किंग अनदर अनस्टार्ट क्वेश्चन संभाजी छत्रपति आस्ट वेदर गवर्नमेंट हैज टेकन any fresh initiative to strengthen the cultural relationship with the countries of Indian Ocean, especially with those having age-old cultural and trade relations with India, as known from archaeological and historical data, apart from cultural exchange programs. Well, once again, Kruti, there is a detailed answer on this uh, from the Ministry. And here, the MOS, VK Singh, goes on to answer this uh, by saying that India and the countries of Indian Ocean region share age-old historical, religious, trade and cultural links. Some of the major initiatives taken by the Ministry are organizing the World Hindi Conference in Mauritius from 18 to 20th of August 2018, taking the sacred relics from Sarnath for public exposition in Sri Lanka, a special three-day visit of 80 armed forces personnel along with their families from Sri Lanka to Bodh Gaya in India, visit of a delegation of the Mahabodhi Society of India to Sri Lanka, celebration of India and Sri Lanka at the rate 70, a joint celebration of 70 years of independence of the two countries and joint celebration of the first Settlers' Day, Seychelles India Day and Creole Day in Seychelles. The next one, Kriti, is a start question from Sopandas Gupta, who raised the issue of attack on minorities, including Hindu minorities in Bangladesh. He said the problem has created demographic strains in border states like Assam. He asked realistic steps taken by the government to ensure safety of the minorities. The systematic attacks on Hindus, which has resulted right from 47, when there were 30% plus Hindus in what was then East Pakistan, to a situation where we have 9%. And where have they come to? They have naturally sought refuge in India. And this is a problem which is there, and this has created unacceptable demographic strains, for example, in the state of Assam, which, is, which cannot bear it any longer. While responding to supplementaries in the Rajya Sabha, External Affairs Minister Sushma Suraj informed that as per statistics of the Bangladesh Bureau in 2011, there were around 8.4% Hindus in the country, which has risen to 10.7% in 2017. 
एक स्टैटिस्टिक्स आया है 2017 में जिसमें उन्होंने कहा था कि 2011 में 8.4 परसेंट हिंदूज थे जो आज बढ़कर 10.7 परसेंट हो गए तो ये एक परसेप्शन बन गया है कि पलायन हो रहा है हिंदू की संख्या घट रही है ये उनका अपना आंकड़ा है सरकारी आंकड़ा जिसको मैं आपके सामने रख रही हूँ यहाँ तक बांग्लादेश में सवाल है माइनॉरिटीज़ के ट्रीटमेंट का ये ठीक है कि काफ़ी से ज़्यादा घटनाएँ होती हैं अटैक्स की घटनाएँ भी होती हैं हत्या की घटनाएं भी होती हैं लेकिन ये भी हम देखें कि बांग्लादेश सरकार जो कहती है कि हम उन पर कार्रवाई करेंगे वो कार्रवाई उन्होंने की है केवल मामले बायोलेट्री उठाकर छुप कर जाते हैं ऐसा नहीं है हम मामले जब बायोलेट्री उठाते हैं तो लॉजिकल कंक्लूजन तक वो जाएं ये भी देखते हैं स्वराज ऑल्सो इन्फॉर्म द हाउस दैट दी इशू ऑफ पुअर कंडीशन एंड मिस ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटीज इन पाकिस्तान हैज बिन हाईलाइटेड बाई इंडिया एट द यूनाइटेड नेशन ह्यूमन राइट्स काउंसिल She urged the members of the upper house to pass the citizenship amendment bill to resolve the problems of minorities in the neighboring countries. The bill amends the Citizenship Act 1955 to make illegal migrants who are Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Jains, Parsis and Christians from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan eligible for citizenship. Here's the answer. Humne Citizenship Act introduce nahi kiya Lok Sabha se parit bhi karwaya. अच्छा हुआ आपने मुझे ये मौका दे दिया इस अवसर का लाभ उठाते हुए मैं आपसे अनुरोध करना चाहूँगी सभापति जी कि वो राज्यसभा में लंबित है ये सारे के सारे मामलों का समाधान हो जाएगा अगर उनको नागरिकता मिल जाएगी हमने दो साल का हम पहले लॉन्ग टर्म वीज़ा देते हैं फिर पाँच साल का हमारा सिटीजनशिप एक्ट कहता है सात साल के बाद वो अगर यहाँ रहें तो नागरिकता ले सकते हैं वो सारे प्रावधान करते हुए सिटीजनशिप एक्ट सरकार लेकर आई है लोकसभा से पारित करा करके राज्यसभा में लंबित है asking another important unstart questions rita brata banerji said whether it is a fact that all of india's neighbors have agreed in joining the one belt one road initiative of china well this one again is answered by the mos uh, of external affairs uh, vk singh who said the government has seen reports about china claiming to pursue projects under its so called one belt one road or belt and road initiative with some countries in our region government has publicly articulated its firm belief that connectivity initiatives must be based on universally recognized international norms good governance rule of law openness transparency and equality and must be pursued in a manner that respects sovereignty and territorial integrity the next one akriti uh, is from the ministry of human resource development uh, and this time around kupendra reddy asked the hrd minister about the steps taken by the government to ban coaching and tuition centers uh, which are also involved in leakage of examination papers whether the government has taken any steps to crack down the and the uh, uh, crack down on the coaching tuition centers and there are there are also involved in such in, in malpractices well hrd minister prakash javadekar assured the upper house that steps are being taken to ensure that the guilty of cbse paper leak are punished while exams are made full proof javadekar said that the cbsc has disaffiliated certain schools for compromising with the sanctity of exams here's the answer is baar jo hua uska ek viral effect jo hai wo bahut mahatvapurna tha aur koi bhi leak hona ye acha nahi hai aur isliye jo aapne sawal pucha isme turant crack down kiya turant police ko bata diya police ne turant crime ko de diya turant crack down kiya hai ek to panch logon ko usme giraftar bhi kiya और उसके साथ साथ दो स्कूलों स्कूल को तुरंत डिसफिलेट किया है सख्त कार्रवाई होगी किसी को बख्शा नहीं जाएगा क्योंकि ये लीकेज सबसे बड़ा अदन्य अपराध है छात्रों के खिलाफ और इसलिए इसको कभी सहन नहीं करेंगे Asking another question, Ranjit Biswal asked whether government or university grants commission has decided to grant autonomy to universities and colleges. Well uh, the government responded to this by saying that the University Grants Commission that is UGC has informed that it has decided to grant autonomy to 76 educational institutions including 62 universities that includes five central universities 21 state universities and 34 deemed to be universities along with two private universities and 14 colleges across the country Now these universities and institutions have been selected on the basis of National Assessment and Accreditation Council (NAAC) ratings. Now the institutions having a NAAC score of 3.5 and above have been placed in category one. The institutions having a NAAC score of 3.26 to 3.5 have been placed in category two. 
and the remaining are placed in category three. The next one is from the member Sanjay Seth, who asked the government whether financial assistance is provided for construction of kitchen cum stores under midday meal scheme. MOS HRD Upendra Kushwa has given this answer and he says that under the midday meal scheme, the central government started providing 100% central assistance for construction of kitchen cum stores at a flat rate of 60,000 rupees per unit since the year 2006 7. The norms for kitchen cum stores have been revised from the month of December 2009 and the cost of construction of kitchen cum stores is now determined on the basis of plinth area norms and the state schedule of rates prevalent in the states and union territories on sharing basis. The revised norms prescribe 20 square meter plinth area for construction of kitchen cum stores in schools having up to 100 children. For every additional 100 children, additional 4 square meter plinth area will be added. States and UTs have the flexibility to modify the slab of 100 children depending upon local conditions. Let's uh, take a short break here, Kriti, and uh, when we come back, we will give you more information on some other questions uh, and answers which have been given by the government. In this episode, we'll talk about a relationship which is very special for all of us. Well, we're talking about the relationship between students and teachers. I feel it's a mission because it is not transactional, because it's not business, it's relational. The job of a teacher these days has become very challenging and very demanding. I think dialogue is the best way with which I am able to discipline my students. Is it still worth it being a teacher? Can we share all our problems with our teachers? Can we be honest with them? Are you happy with your profession? Can we really challenge a teacher? Nowadays, there are very few people I meet who actually want to become a teacher. Teacher-student bond continues even after the student has passed. Teacher's importance is when you get out of school. When my students come and tell me that they still remember what I said in the classroom, you know, that's something that makes my life so meaningful. Thank you, teachers. Watch The Pulse Teacher's Day Special on Sunday at 8 p.m. only on Rajasabha TV. Welcome back, you're watching our special edition, Question R. Here's another important question, Vishal. And Harsh Vardhan Singh Dungarpur has asked whether the government has made a provision for modernization of those undertakings which are suffering losses or are likely to become sick during the 12th five-year plan. Well, the answer is given by Babul Supriyo, the minister concerned, and uh, he says, as per the Public Enterprises Survey 2016-17, there were 257 operating central public sector enterprises, that is CPSEs, uh, as on 31st March 2017. Out of these, 51 CPSEs were incurring continuous losses during the last three years, that is 2014-15, 15-16 and 16-17. The reasons for losses vary from CPSC to CPSC. However, some common problems uh, for losses in these CPSEs include resource crunch, low productivity, unsustainable business operations, old, old and obsolete plant and machinery, outdated technology, low capacity utilization, poor debt, equity structure, excess manpower, weak marketing strategies, stiff competition, lack of business plans, heavy interest burden and high input costs, etc. The next one, uh, Kriti, is from uh, Parimal Natwani, who goes on to ask the question uh, to the government about the plans to promote electric or hybrid automobiles in the country since hybrid cars are cleaner and fossil fuels are becoming costly. Well, the government has given a very, very comprehensive answer here. And the government says with a view to provide impetus to domestic manufacturing of hybrid and electrical vehicles in the country, the government of India approved the National Mission on Electric Mobility in 2011 and subsequently National Electric Mobility Mission Plan 2020 was unveiled in 2013. This mission plan was designed mainly considering the fuel security and environmental pollution in the country. 
in order to promote manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles and ensuring sustainable growth of the same. And as a follow-up of the mission, Department of Heavy Industry formulated a scheme named FAME India. It is for a period of two years starting from 1st of April 2015. The scheme has four focus areas, namely demand creation, pilot project technology, development and charging infrastructure. The phase one of FAME scheme has, however, been extended till 30th of September 2018. Moving on to the Ministry of Women and Child Development now. And this one is the oral question which has been asked by a member Chaya Verma. And she asked about rising crime against women and the steps taken by the government to check them. What is the reason for the well, uh, this one Kriti has been responded to by the MOS uh, from the Women and Child Development Ministry uh, who said the government is committed for safety and uh, protection of women and apprised the house about the measures taken by both uh, centre and states. Let's listen. We have been working on the law of the Pradhi Kanun Sansudan Adhyadis 2018. और जिसमें 12 वर्ष से कम उम्र की बच्चियों के साथ में जाते होने पर जो सजा की अवधि थी उस सजा की अवधि को भी बढ़ाया गया और इसमें सजा की अवधि बढ़ाने के साथ-साथ आजीवन कारावास और मृत्युदंड का प्रावधान इसमें किया जा रहा है बलात्कार के जो मामलों में जांच का जो काम उसमें लंबे समय तक पेंडिंग रहता था उसमें भी समयावधि सीमित थी की जा रही है उसमें 2 माह की समयावधि निर्धारित की जा रही है और अभी 17 तारीख को हमने महिला एवं बाल विकास मंत्रालय कि जो हमारे देश भर के जो मंत्री राज्यों के राज्यों के मंत्रियों के साथ में हमने एक बैठक ली उसमें महिलाओं और बच्चों को संरक्षण प्रदान करने के लिए उनको सुरक्षा प्रदान करने के लिए सामूहिक रूप से राज्य सरकारों के साथ में इस विषय को कैसे आगे बढ़ाना चाहिए इसको बजाय चर्चा करने के हम सब सामूहिकता के साथ में कैसे संवेदनशीलता के साथ में और हम इसके जरिए हमें कदम बढ़ाना चाहिए इस बारे में विचार करने की आवश्यकता है वेल इन अनदर क्वेश्चन टू द सेम मिनिस्ट्री वंदना चवन ऑफ एनसीपी रेज द इशू ऑफ सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट ऑफ विमेन एट वर्क प्लेसेस एंड सेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस आर नॉट कंप्लाइंग विद द प्रोविजंस ऑफ द सेक्सुअल हैरेसमेंट ऑफ विमेन एट वर्क प्लेस एक्ट एंड आर स्टिल फॉलोइंग द रिटेंडेंट विशाखा गाइडलाइंस by the Supreme Court. So it is an observation that the government, semi-government and private organizations are not complying with the provisions of this act. And if at all, they are still following the Vishakha guidelines laid down by the Supreme Court, which are now redundant. So the law prescribes for an internal complaints committee, putting our board in these organizations. Unfortunately, nothing seems to be uh, done on that respect. So I would like to know how the government plans to address this MOS Women and Child Development Virendra Kumar said women can complain about any harassment through various Mahila Shakti Kendra. Here's the answer. Mahila Shakti Kendra ke madhyam se aur is tarah ki ghatnao se jo prabhavit amari mahila hai wo in Mahila Shakti Kendra ke madhyam se apni report jo hai na aasani se maha sampat karke pocha sakti hai. Dousi baat ujla ujla mein aur yon vyapsaik istal par istal jo kaam karne mein ali hamari jo behne hai उनके लिए सुरक्षा प्रदान करने के लिए और अभी जैसा मैंने पूर्व में बताया सत्रह तारीख को मंत्रालय ने देश के सभी राज्यों के महिला बाल विकास जो हमारे मंत्री हैं मंत्रियों के साथ में इस संबंध में एक व्यापक नीति बनाते हुए और महिलाओं को सुरक्षा प्रदान करने के लिए सामूहिक रूप से उस पर पहल करने की शुरुआत की है Another important question was asked by members Jharna Das Bedia and Sanjay Seth and they asked about the present policy formulated for the rehabilitation of women under trials and convicts in the country. Well, the MOS concerned here, Virendra Kumar answered uh, the question saying that the Ministry of Home Affairs has issued advisories to the state and union territories for wide range guidance, including guidance on aftercare and rehabilitation of women prisoners. It provides that the process of aftercare and rehabilitation of offenders is an integral part of uh, institutional care and the administrative machinery carrying how the programs uh, should be integrated with the Department of uh, Prisons. Uh, there is also a dedicated chapter on aftercare and rehabilitation in Model Prison Manual 2016, which has been shared by Ministry of Home Affairs with all states and UTs, and they were advised to adopt the best practices and guidance available in the manual.
Well, let's now move on to the Ministry of Planning. And the question is from Shri Prabhat Jha, who asked the government whether Niti Aayog is making efforts of strengthening cooperative and competitive federalism at central, state and district level through aspirational district program, real-time monitoring and dynamic syllabus improvement. Here's a very elaborate answer, Vishal, and the government says that Niti Aayog is committed to strengthening cooperative and competitive federalism as the Aayog is of the view that development of India can be accelerated if central and state governments work as Team India as it leads to synergistic partnership between them. The aspirational district program was launched on January 5, 2018 with the objective of rapidly transforming 117 districts in India which have registered relatively low progress in social and economic indicators or suffer from different vulnerabilities. The next question was asked by A.K. Selvraj and he asked whether the government proposes to set up a high-level committee to oversee the country's progress towards UN Sustainable Development Goals aimed at ending poverty, fighting inequalities and tackling climate change. Well, this one has been answered by the minister concerned, Rao Indajit Singh, who goes on to say that there is no specific proposal to set up a high-level committee to oversee the country's progress towards uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals aimed at ending poverty, fighting inequalities and tackling climate change. However, Niti Aayog has constituted a task force consisting of representatives from Niti Aayog, central ministries, state governments and think tanks to follow up on the implementation of sustainable development goals in the country. A dashboard is being developed with support from the United Nations Development Programme in India to monitor the progress on sustainable development goals in the country. Well, the next one is from Sanjay Raut, who goes on to ask the government whether it is considering to eliminate food and energy subsidies by providing a universal basic income particularly to every needy people in the country. Well, Minister of Planning Rao Indrajit Singh has given this answer and he says that there is no proposal under consideration of the government to eliminate food and energy subsidies by providing a universal basic income. Earlier, the Economic Survey 2016-17 had a separate dedicated chapter on UBI highlighting its potential benefits, fiscal costs and challenges in implementation. The survey itself had recognized that UBI is an idea whose time has come, perhaps not for immediate implementation, but at least for serious public deliberation. So these were the important questions and the answers given by the government in the Rajya Sabha Vishal. Well, yes, indeed. And uh, this is uh, it uh, as far as this particular episode is concerned. Next week, we'll bring you more important questions and the answers. Stay tuned to Rajya Sabha Television and thanks for watching.